Hello everyone, welcome to Mostly Math. Today we will be proving the Wallace formula for pi in two ways. What's the Wallace formula for pi? Well, it is actually an infinite product representation of pi over 2. The Wallace product formula states that pi over 2 is actually equal to the product of 2 over 1 times 2 over 3 times 4 over 3 times 4 over 5 times 6 over 5 times 6 over 7 continued on indefinitely. And you see the pattern? So we start at the top with the even numbers 2, 2, 4, 4, 6, 6, 8, 8, etc. On the bottom we have the odd numbers but instead of repeating 1 twice we only repeat it once for reasons which we'll see later. 1, 3, 3, 5, 5, 7, 7, 9, 9, etc. On to infinity. It's a pretty cool product just to know that we typically have pi as an infinite series like the Leibniz series but now we have it as a product um, it is useful in some theoretical contexts one of which we'll explore in a future video it should be noted however that if you try to actually compute pi from this it doesn't converge very quickly so you're better off using a different method like the Leibniz series to calculate pi and we are going to show this in two ways we are going to use a method from Euler. We are going to use the Euler um, infinite product sine function. And we're also going to use the original formulation of this, or at least something close to it, because of Wallace himself. All right, let's get started with Euler's sine representation. I'm not going to derive this in this video. There are plenty of proofs of this if you look at the basal problem. This problem has you sum 1 over n squared from n equals 1 to infinity. The classical proof of the basal problem actually employs the infinite product representation of the sine function and the typical proof by Euler is found there. It's possible I could do a future video on it, but it's so standard. I'm sure you can find it for yourself. But we will be using Euler's sign representation of... Euler tells us that the function sine x over x is actually equal to the following infinite product as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 minus x squared over n squared pi squared. And he derives this by noting that the sine function can be considered an infinite degree polynomial with these zeros. And if you want to do this in a modern context, there is a complex analysis formulation as well, which is pretty interesting. But here, we're just going to use the result. So what Euler invites us to do is plug in x equals pi over 2 to the formula. If we do this, then we have sine pi over 2 over pi over 2. Well, we know that sine pi over 2 is just, of course, 1. And we reciprocate pi over 2 to get 2 over pi. And this is actually equal to the thing on the right-hand side. So as n goes from 1 to infinity, we have the product of 1 minus pi over 2 squared over n squared pi squared. Well, we see that the cancellation of the pi's is going to happen. And this just becomes 1 over 4n squared. So we get 1 minus, um, yeah, there's no x because we're plugging in x equals pi over 2, of course. Okay, we have this so far. And now we really want the product for pi over 2, not 2 over pi, so we can now reciprocate both sides. Uh, first, let me just multiply top and bottom by 4n squared here. So it becomes, we have 4n squared minus 1 over 4n squared. Did I do that right? Yeah, I just multiplied this term by 4n squared over 4n squared. So now we can reciprocate 
we take one over everything here, we get pi over two is equal to the infinite product, then goes from one to infinity, of four n squared over four to the n squared minus one. And now we're gonna note here that four n squared is really just two n squared. So we can write this on the top as two factors of two n squared and on the bottom, we can note that 4n squared minus 1 is actually equal to 2n minus 1, 2n plus 1, because that's how we use the difference of squares formula. And you see where we're going here. We already have the odd numbers here. We already have the even numbers here. So it's just the product as n goes from 1 to infinity. And now we're pretty much done. We have 2n over 2n minus 1 times 2n over 2n plus 1. And now we can just start plugging in n's and hope that we get the formula. Let's see what happens here. Well, for n equals 1, we have 2 times 1 on top, and 2 times 1, which is 2 minus 1, is 1. Okay. The next part of the term, well, I'll write in this formula, yeah, yeah. Next term is n equals 2. No, sorry. The first term consists of two parts. We're still at n equals 1. We have 2 on top again. And then we have 2 times 1, which is 2 plus 1, which is 3. And we see why we don't repeat 1 twice here. And we look at n equals 2 now. So we have 4 for this term. 2 times 2 is 4 minus 1 is 3. We get another 4. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1, which is 5. And we see how the pattern continues. 1, 3, 3, 5, 5, 6, 7, etc. Which is exactly what I wrote down in the beginning. And I think this is pretty cool. The Wallace formula for pi simply follows from plugging x equals pi over 2 into the Euler sine representation, which is pretty cool, I think. Now let's look at a second method. Of course, there's more than one way to peel these onions. The second method that I'm going to show you is close to how Wallace derived it originally. But I obtained this proof from the Arfkin Math Methods books, of which I've already presented several topics from. I link the exact problem in the description. It's not going to be exactly how Wallace proved it, but it's still going to use the Wallace integrals, which I will introduce for you soon. Okay. So this proof actually, actually relies on a previous video. In a previous video, we looked at the beta function and were able to derive the values for some particular trigonometric integrals. If we look at a, a previous video, the proof due to Arfkin, he actually told us that if we look at the integral from 0 to pi over 2, it's back to theta, of sine n theta, it's actually the same thing for the cosine of n theta as well. This is actually equal to n minus 1 double factorial over n double factorial for n odd, and pi over 2 times the same thing for the even ends. So we already have these cool integrals and we are going to see how we can get the Wallace product as a result of this. First thing to notice is we are going to be considering a quotient of integrals involving 2n and 2n plus 1. We want to note here that as n goes to infinity, 2n is approximately 2n plus 1. And we are going to define these integrals here. We're going to call them i, n. They are the Wallace integrals that I spoke of. Let's see which order do I do it in. Right. It's going to be the quotient of the two integrals, 0 to pi over 2, respect to theta of sine 2n theta, divided by another integral, 0 to pi over 2, 
expected theta of sine 2n plus 1 theta. And by this hand wavy argument here, we are going to assume that as n goes to infinity, this actually goes to 1. And there is some, um, there is a graphical evidence for this, which I'm, which I'm going to present for you now. If we look at theta and we look at the integral 0 to pi over 2, and we look at sine 2 and theta, looks like something like this. We will see that if we have sine 2n plus 1 theta, they have the same values at the starting and the end points. And as you increase n, they do get closer and closer together. So there is a reason to believe, besides this hand wavy argument here, that they should become 1. There's also a way to prove it more rigorously with um, arguments involving integration by parts and a recursive relationship for these integrals. But since we already have the answers here, it will kind of defeat the purpose of this problem to go through those arguments again. So I think it's pretty clear that this product, sorry, that this quotient of integrals goes to 1. And here's how we're going to use it. We already have the values for these two bad boys up here, since this tells us that the odd and the even values are simply this quotient of double factorials. Incidentally, um, the double factorials were talked about in a previous video. It's, it's pretty straightforward to calculate them. If the number is even, you just multiply all of the even factors. So six times, sorry, not the even factors, but the even numbers below it. So example, six double factorial is six times four times two. And we looked at seven double factorial to be seven times five times two, three. That's how you compute the double factorials in general. It's really not, not hard or anything. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. All we have to do now is basically plug in our values. So let's begin. We defined it here, and now we are going to write in the values that we have. So the even values comes pi over 2. We're going to plug 2n into n here, so it becomes 2n minus 1 double factorial over 2n double factorial. And for the other integral, we have this one here. We're going to reciprocate, so 2n minus plus one double factorial there. And then we have 2n double factorial again here because we reciprocated 2n plus one minus one is 2n. So we can now flip this around to tell us that pi over two is equal to might as well take the limit as n goes to infinity. Well, we'll do that shortly. Pi over 2 is equal to i n times the reciprocal of what we had down there. 2 n double factorial over 2 n minus 1 double factorial times 2 n double factorial over 2 n plus 1 double factorial. And you can probably see where this is going. We have the same thing here as we did with the other video. It's just written slightly differently. And now we're going to get rid of i n here by taking the limit as n goes to infinity. As n goes to infinity, we have pi over 2 is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 n double factorial over 2 n minus 1 double factorial times 2 n double factorial over 2n plus 1 double factorial. And this is exactly the same as the infinite product we had before. It's just written differently. And the way that you would calculate this is you start at n equals 1, for example, just like we had with the product. So the first term, n equals 1, becomes 2 over 2 times 1, which is 1 minus 1, which is 1. The next one is exactly the same as before. So I don't even think I have to write down this argument. And then we look at 
the term after that, n equals 2, so it's 4, and then you see where we're going from here. You get it. 4, 5, 6, 2, 2, 4, 4, 6, 6, 3, 3, 5, 5, 7, etc. Which is the Wallace product formula for pi. So we've actually learned a few things here. We've learned how to calculate the Wallace product formula in two ways. And we've also learned how to represent infinite products, or at least special ones, in terms of the limits of, of, the, of the double factorials, which is pretty cool. And you might ask why I'm doing this video. Well, one, I think it's cool that there are two pretty easy ways to compute the Wallace product formula. And as a future video, I'm going to use this to, I'm going to use this to derive the value of the derivative of the zeta function evaluated at zero, but even easier than I did before by using the Wallace product. And if you enjoyed this, want to see more, please like, subscribe, tell your friends. We'll see you next time.